Hey guys, what's up? My name is JP, and some of you guys might know me from the past couple of HSM ski trips, but tonight I get to be with you all as we continue our study through the book of Nehemiah. Um, before we jump in, let's pray for our time together uh, here in small groups. So dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for um, this time to be around our friends and um, our community, and we just ask that you would um, bless this time, um, that you would encourage us and strengthen us with your word. Um, that you would just give me the words to speak and you would um, empower us to go and do your work in building the kingdom of God um, this next week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so tonight we're going to be looking at chapter 4 of Nehemiah. And as we begin, let's refresh and just paint a little bit of context about what this book is all about. So the book begins with the people of God, the Israelites, far from home in Babylon, and Nehemiah is commissioned by God to return to Jerusalem and to rebuild its wall. And so very simply, Nehemiah is the story of the people of God doing the things of God. Now, in chapter 4, we're going to see how opposition comes against the people of God precisely because they are doing the things of God. But we're also going to see how God's people respond to this opposition and how God remains faithful to them in the midst of this opposition and persecution. Now, I'm not going to read all the text now, um, but would really encourage you guys to do that in your small groups. Instead, I'm going to pick out a few key verses throughout the story. Um, so the first place in chapter 4 that we're going to look is at the very beginning in, in verse 1. And it reads, Now, when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. So right off the bat, from the very beginning, we see that opposition comes against the people of God as they do the things of God. Remember last week, Holden talked about challenging circumstances that we experience, tragedy, difficulty, pain, loss, and trial. And he talked about these things because all people experience them. The tough circumstances that he spoke to are the result of a broken and sinful world filled with a broken and sinful people. But we're not talking about challenging circumstances. We're talking about opposition. And it means something a little bit different. See, opposition comes against the people of God because they stand out, because of their identity, and, be and the people of God experience persecution. And I think it's rec important to recognize the difference between opposition and tough circumstances. This is really because the Jews choose to be who they are, not because they're just in the world that we're in. So jumping back to the text, the first point we see is that opposition is immediate right? It's as soon as the chapter starts. But as you read through the rest of the chapter, you'll actually see that this persecution continues. In fact, the entire story, all of chapter four, happens under the threat of opposition. So not only is the opposition immediate, but it's also constant. It's continuous. It, it never ends. So we have that opposition is constant and continuous, and it's immediate. You'll notice something too, um, about the nature of the opposition that the people of God experience in Nehemiah. So not only is it immediate and constant, but it actually evolves. The nature of the opposition changes. In verse 1, uh, the opposition is mocking, right? That's what we see in the text. But in verse 8, we have conspiracy and fighting against the people of Jews. And then in verse 11, we have murder and, and killing of them. So the dial of pure persecution against the people of God gets turned up as they continue to do the work of God. So the opposition to the people of God and to the things of God is immediate, it's constant, and it increases throughout the entire chapter. And here's where the direct connection to you and your small group comes in. So like Nehemiah and the people of God, if you also identify with the people of God as a follower of Christ— and if you do the things of God, you also will be opposed. 2 Timothy 3.12 promises us that indeed all who, got, who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And that's not encouraging or exciting to hear, but it is reality. And I think it's important we speak to that. So I know for me personally, this opposition, opposition actually began in high school. I was excluded from groups of people, definitely wasn't invited to parties, um, at times, even isolated from my friends because of my reputation, because of how I was identified. But often, especially when I was younger, when that opposition and pressure came, 
I didn't do a very good job of handling it at all. I remember I used to lie about what I did on my weekends. I would say that I partied and drank and smoked. And I would say that just to blend in, to fit in, to fade into the background, and just to make my life easier by avoiding that kind of opposition. But as Christians, as the people of God, and as people that do the things of God, we're actually called to something much greater than fading into the background and blending in with the culture around us. As Christians, we're actually called to look different, to stand out, to stand up, and even when that promise of opposition hits us, we're still called to keep looking different. This is really what Jesus in Matthew 5 calls being salt and light. Um, We just look different from the rest of the world. All right, so we see that opposition is promised, and we've read how Nehemiah experienced that opposition in his day. Um, But now I want to transition and, and sort of see what the response of the people of God is to all this persecution and opposition. So throughout the story in chapter 4, every single time that Nehemiah experiences this opposition, his first response is always prayer. Um, From the mocking that he experiences in verse 1, right following that, in verse 4 and 5, he's praying. From the conspiracy and fighting in verse 8, by verse 9, the very next verse, he's saying, but we prayed. And then as the opposition continues throughout the whole rest of the chapter, the, the threat of attack remains. We'll see in verse 14 that Nehemiah remembers the Lord. And again in verse 20 that Nehemiah reminds the people that our God will fight for us. Right? These are all examples of prayer that we see throughout chapter 4. And this response of prayer, the people of God are putting their trust and their hope in God. And this is what, what Holden talked about last week. So the first response that we have to opposition is, is to pray, to put our hope and our trust in God and turn to him. But Nehemiah doesn't just immediately sit down after praying, and he doesn't wait for God to just do his thing. Nehemiah actually just continues to do the work that he was already doing, the work that he was commissioned to do. He and the people of God keep doing the work of God by rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Despite the opposition that they're experiencing, the people keep doing the things of God. And we see this throughout the story. Um, It's sort of this cycle that develops. After each instance of opposition and then prayer, the very next thing that happens after the prayer is that the people keep building. So we see this cycle. It's opposition, prayer, building. Opposition, prayer, and building. And for you guys, just real practically, Doing the things of God does not mean going and building a wall. For Christians in the world today, the work of God means going and building God's kingdom. That's not a physical kingdom. It's not a city. It's not Jerusalem like we see in the Old Testament. It's a spiritual kingdom. Um, And so spiritually, in your own life and in the lives of others, you are called to build the name of Christ in them and in yourself. It means that you keep looking different. Um, And for a lot of you, that doesn't mean doing anything. It's not a work that we build. It actually is more of an abstaining. We keep from doing the things that the culture tells us are okay to do. It means to actively keep choosing to be identified with the people of God and to keep doing the things of God by abstaining from the rest of the world around you. You continue to look different that way. So that's our second really tangible action and response is that we respond in action. And finally, Nehemiah responds to opposition in community. By uniting and unifying the people of God together, Nehemiah and the people of God respond to this opposition in prayer, action, and in community, right? And this is where I really want to finish up, really, where I really want to dial in um, before you guys go out to small group. You know, what encouraged me to keep looking different when I was in high school um, was that the guys that were around me looked just as different also. My freshman year of high school, I was put into a small group with three other guys. I didn't know them. We all went to different schools. We were on different sports teams, different interests. Literally the only thing that we found in common was that we had a desire to look different from the rest of the world. And even just yesterday, I talked to two of them on the phone 
uh, as I was preparing to talk to you guys and just was able to share the encouragement that they were to me um, as they became my community in high school. I mean, we still keep up. We're still great friends. And my hope for you is that you would use small groups here at HSM to develop that kind of community. Um, in our community, it was the bond of Christ. Uh, it was the bond of shared life purpose that built the foundation that sustains our friendship to this day. Both those guys are engaged and I get to be a part of their wedding to celebrate them because of that bond. Um, so as you guys go into small groups tonight, anticipate that opposition is coming and respond by building not just a group, um, not just a friendship, but really by building a community that is centered and has its foundation in Christ. A community that will encourage you to keep doing the things of God and keep identifying as the people of God. And maybe that looks like a couple different things. You know, maybe that looks like reaching out with a text to some of your guys midweek. Um, maybe that looks like praying together. Maybe it looks like uh, just being intentional with this time that you're about to have together, just focusing a little bit more. Maybe it's just hanging out and having a good time together. But I think it's crucial that you guys build a community because if you haven't experienced the opposition already, I promise you that it is coming. And I wanna encourage you that if you respond in prayer and you respond in action and you respond in community, you're gonna prove your foundation to be strong and true. Um, so thanks guys. Now uh, go and just build that community that we talked about.